everyone. My name is Pranay Kimri. I'm the founder of Demo Squared, which is an online platform for startups to demo their product or service. What we're trying to do here is to allow anyone who has worked hard to build a product or a service or an app to come online, to come on board with us and share their story. Today we have Benjamin Trotter from Storefront Social in the program. Storefront Social allows anyone to create a Facebook shop or a Facebook store in an effortless manner. Welcome to the program, Benjamin. Thank you very much for having me. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, basically, uh, my name is Benjamin Trotter, as you said, and uh, I started Storefront Social in 2010, and it was basically a side project from another company that I was working with where we were trying to figure out a way to monetize our social media channel, and we'd come up with the idea about how cool it would be to set up a store and kind of show our newest product. So when I would leave work for the day, I'd go home and kind of hammer out a little side project to see how to build a Facebook application. And as soon as we started using it, I kind of felt like it was a product that people would actually want to pay for. And I branded it and put it out there. And now about four years later, Storefront Social is a pretty big, uh, one of the pioneering apps for Facebook for selling online. Wow, great. So, um, so your target audience, I'm assuming, is small businesses? Who's yes. your core audience? I'd say it's interesting because it's actually evolved over the time. Um, initially, the way Storefront Social was set up is that it would allow a brand that was already established on Facebook the ability to expand onto um, their products being expanded onto Facebook. So these were companies like Zumba Fitness and people who had a pretty big fan base, but they also had an e-commerce store that was already doing all the transactions online. So Storefront Social became basically a springboard from Facebook fans springboarding and generating more traffic to an existing e-commerce store. But then as Storefront Social grew, we saw that the people who were actually reaching out to us were people who were smaller businesses who had never sold before online and needed a solution that would enable them to sell, you know, pots and pans or whatever they're making, you know, jewelry or ceramic mugs. So we went from kind of corporate all the way down to mom and pop shop and meet everywhere in between. And now we have so many different payment processors available. We have PayPal, Google Checkout, Authorize.net, which kind of the medium businesses use. And then we also enable you to still springboard to that existing e-commerce platform as an option as well. Wow. Sounds, sounds really cool. Yeah. I'm ready to take a look whenever you are. Yeah, sure. So let's see. Um, so first what I'll do is I'll show uh, an actual Facebook store so you can kind of see mm -hmm. um, what that storefront basically looks like. Mm -hmm. Are you able to see the screen now? Yep. Okay, perfect. So this is a company called Sweet Blossom Gifts, and this is kind of uh, a mix between a mom and pop shop and a small medium business because, as you can see, the items are quite handmade. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they have about eight different featured um, products that they change on a weekly basis, mm -hmm. and then they have um, one per line, which basically tells you a little bit about what the product is. Mm -hmm. We have the available. Uh, availability to give a bigger um, description and then the people can like and share that tweet about it and they can actually go through and purchase directly from the e-commerce store so this purchase button actually changes depending on what type of um, transaction that the company wants to do this is being used by a company that already has an existing e-commerce store so we simply springboard all the people over to that e-commerce store if they didn't have that existing online store already they could actually have this turn into a paypal a paypal button okay. um, an add to cart button through paypal google checkout we even do bitcoin um, so we basically implement with any payment processor that our customers are requesting from us. Okay. So, um, I'm sorry? Do you have Stripe right now? Stripe. No, uh, we have not implemented with Stripe simply just because no customer has asked okay. us about it yet. Yeah, um, it's more of a developer, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. We should probably be using Sky uh, Stripe, actually. <laughs> But uh, you can see basically what the store looks like. Mm 
Mm -hmm. um, the storefront actually comes in various languages. So we have Italian, French, Spanish, German, Thai, Japanese, Chinese, the list goes on. Uh, we also support those specific currencies within those specific nations. And basically, it's very easy for us to update. So um, the advantage of being a small team is basically we can turn around and really give the customers whatever they request of us. Um, one of the things that sets Storefront Social apart from the competitors is the ability to really customize what your storefront looks like. This is a very elegant implementation where it's just one per row with a bunch of featured. Um, we also have the ability to show three across or four across. Um, we have different share and like buttons. We have Pinterest, yeah, I was, I was Google Plus. Are you able to quickly show us the back end, how it works? When somebody yeah, sure. Yeah. So basically, um, let's see. Are you able to see the screen that I'm on right now? Uh -huh. Okay. So this is actually the back end of the storefront. So once somebody comes and signs up for a free seven-day trial, mm -hmm. they're shown this kind of index page, which shows you your recent activity, um, a couple of things about your your storefront at a glance, um, and then a little bit of social implementation to let them keep knowing what we're up to um, through mm -hmm. Facebook and Twitter. But the main thing is there will be a wizard at the top of the screen that says step one, the first thing you need to do is start adding products to your store. Okay. And so when somebody goes in and tries to add a product, they'll see three main ways to do this. One would be to import from a CSV, which is an Excel spreadsheet, which is typically what people who already have e-commerce stores would have as um, an export list of their products. So for people who are actually using their e-commerce store, it's very easy for them to export that product list, import it into Facebook, uh, the Facebook store and everything's um, automatically input. You can also add manually by which then you would be manually putting in all the information um, about that product there. And then once you add it, you can upload the file. You can add uh, up to maybe five different pictures of that product mm -hmm. um, to create that product detail page. We also do the importing um, from various feeds. So if you're familiar with a Google base feed, that's basically the standard of um, e-commerce stores that then syndicate their products to various, um, you know, uh, the product, uh, what do you call this? The price comparison shopping. Okay. So Google base feeds are typically the feed that e-commerce stores provide to these various um websites to basically parse all their products and have it available on the web. So we took that and um, enable people to bring their products directly in and every 24 hours we'll parse their feed to make sure there hasn't been any additions or subtractions from that mm -hmm. um, storefront. So it really keeps it easily manageable for them. After they've Im imported some products, they can go to the manage products page, which basically has a drag and drop for ordering. Um, you can order it the way that you want. Um, you can edit the products. You can put in different categories. And uh, you can determine if they want it to be published or not. So if, for instance, you're building a product but you don't want it live yet, you can simply unclick the publish button and it will be removed immediately from the store. Okay. There's also an image view so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. This is kind of a demo store and some of the images aren't, show uh, aren't showing up from the feed. But... Um, you can also drag and drop um, the products that you want to feature in here, and that kind of pops up to the top of the storefront to get those um, even more views. And as I said before, one of the things that really differentiates Storefront Social from competitors is the ability to really customize a lot of things about your store. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like I said, we have the different languages, the different currencies. We do integrate with Storefront, um, with Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, mm -hmm. we allow the users to uh, customize the call to action button. So some people may have a downloadable product where instead of buy now, download is more of a, a word that they'd want to use to do that call to action. So we allow all of our customers to be able to customize that buy now button. Um, you can also clone the storefront to various Facebook pages. So we've had some affiliate marketers that come on and they want to syndicate their same store to multiple Facebook pages, so we're able to do that. Um, 
the storefront templates, as I told you as well, there's so many different options that we offer for how to really lay out the products. And it's really up to the storefront owner to determine which is the best layout that they want that is going to re resonate with their customer base. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, the ability to customize the, uh, the banner at the top of the store. Mm -hmm. We also have the, re the reveal tab, which is also called the fan gating. So basically anyone who comes to the storefront, if they have not liked the page yet, they'll be shown a graphic to encourage them to like before they can see the exclusive storefront. Okay. Uh, we also have custom CSS where you can put in custom CSS to change the button colors or do anything to match the brand of the, the company. Um, and more and more, we found that people were wanting to take this as an actual e-commerce solution for them. So we gave them the ability to port their storefront to an actual web page. So, for instance, if somebody has a WordPress site mm -hmm. and they wanted to put this storefront in it, we give them the iframe um, information where they can bring so they can that into the WordPress the whole store on their site, right? Exactly. Awesome. Okay. So it, it makes it very portable. You're not stuck with just Facebook. And the idea with this is, as more social networks open up, for instance, Google Plus, if they were able to open up to third-party applications and have something like a store, we would be the first people to be up there saying, "Hey, we want to give our customers the ability to have their storefront on Google as well." Um, we also are the only storefront application that provides um, an iPad application. Mm -hmm. um, so you can have all of your stores in kind of an iPad um, catalog. And then we also give analytics for the actual storefront as well. This is, again, a demo account, but we run a, fa a fan count so you can kind of see how your fans are growing throughout the time. We do page views based on, you know, how many people are seeing the actual storefront. And then we do the click throughs where we measure how many people are actually clicking through to whatever action they're wanting. One thing I, I didn't see yet, uh, or maybe it's coming up, yeah. is uh, inventory management. Where do I find out how many products I have sold or how many I have left in my inventory? That's an excellent question. So basically, as Storefront Social is kind of a front-end marketing platform for those transactions, we don't tie into the actual transaction taking place. So for instance, if it's going to an e-commerce site, we'll never get the tracking information back from that person to know whether or not a conversion happened. So it's basically we're kind of the face or the ad, so we can mm -hmm. tell you what has happened from that ad. And if they have the Google tracking for analytics um, on their back end, they should be able to follow that traffic in from storefront to actually be that conversion. So um, that probably means that you are not taking any percentage of the sales either, right? Exactly. Okay. So this is basically one of another differentiating part of Storefront Social as well, because there are absolutely no contracts or transaction fees. Um, and we really wanted this to be a no brainer as far as companies wanting to sign up and advertise their products. Mm -hmm. So if people are using Facebook advertising, they may spend thousands of dollars trying to put a picture of one of their products up to a targeted group. Mm -hmm. Whereas this starts as low as $10, goes to $50 a month okay. um, based on how many products you have. But your products are available 24-7. Mm -hmm. And really the onus is up to you to really engage that fan base to get your products in front of people to get them talking about it. That, that leads me to my next question I was going to ask you about your revenue sure. model. So what does it look like? Yeah, so it's very simple. Uh, we have a, fi a free seven-day trial. Mm -hmm. If anybody likes to continue using it past the seven days, then it's a monthly fee, and that starts from as little as nine ninety-five a month, and then our next one is nineteen ninety-five, and I believe our top one is twenty-nine ninety-five. Okay. Um, and that's based on how many products you're wanting to have in the storefront. Okay. And how many customers do you have right now? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, I think I will hold off on that answer. Okay. But we're definitely growing. <laughs> but you're growing, right? Yeah, okay. Oh, for sure. Can, for sure. Can you tell us then about how you got your very first customer? Paying it's customer. actually a funny story. Um, this is kind of back when uh, I put it out there to brand as Storefront Social. I had created a Facebook campaign to kind of start targeting um, e-commerce companies and uh, managers of e-commerce uh, 
type things. And the ad was supposed to run, let's say, next week. And I was flying, and during a trip back to um, the East Coast, I got an email from someone saying, hey, I'm trying to sign up for uh, the Facebook store. And when I landed, I was thinking, how in the world did they find uh, Storefront Social? Because there had been no marketing. There had been nothing that had been done yet. And I saw that the Facebook ad campaign had actually inadvertently started. Oh. So literally within the first hour of it have starting, Mm -hmm. uh, a customer was already ready to sign up and pay for the the subscription service. Oh wow! So right. then it's kind of it, it kind of validated that there is a need that I was going to be able to fulfill with this product. What a great way to get started, huh? <laughs> yeah, and it's been a, a a fun ride ever since. It's been four years now, coming this April. Wow! So obviously, I mean, it's it's been a long journey for you, but it's it's. You've come a long way from, from, from your drawing board to what it is today, right? For sure. Can you quickly share how you, obviously you, you briefly uh, tossed best there earlier by saying how you're doing it part-time on the side initially, but can you just give a, on a high level overview of how you got to the point where you are today, starting from the idea, how you developed, how you, very, very, uh, in, in just the gist of it. Yeah, for sure. So basically, um, as I mentioned, I kind of did this as a side project. I'm not a developer by any means, but I can play around with PHP enough to kind of build a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. When I had this first customer and then the first 10 customers, it became a total mess because people were logging into other people's accounts and it was just poorly developed because obviously it was a proof of concept that was actually live. Mm -hmm. So I knew at that point I needed to really partner with someone that understood scalability, engineering, and put Storefront Social on a right path to do this. And I literally listed a, an ad on Craigslist to find someone who would be willing to partner to do this. Mm -hmm. And within the first couple of weeks of that ad being live, I'd selected a person to work with. And this was, I guess, in the fall of 2010 at that point. Okay. And we worked from October until December, putting this on a really nice framework um, that was scalable, putting it on Amazon Web Services for scalability as well. And by January of 2011, I actually had left my job and decided to do this full time. And I moved to Austin, Texas to kind of be in a cheaper cost of living and another tech scene and of course the state taxes here being null made it a very attractive place to kind of move the company to. Austin has a great tech scene, right? It's, it's incredible. It's literally like being in San Francisco all over again. Right. <laughs> so, um, having come this far, what has been your greatest challenge so far besides the development? Uh, the greatest challenge, I'd say, is growth. Um, basically, we're at a point now where uh, we're maintaining our revenue stream, which is great and everything, but um, we have not marketed uh, at all, which is incredible. I think in, that in itself is a pretty big success story. Mm -hmm. We've really been able to manage our website to be informative and hit those key terms for what we're wanting to rank for. Mm -hmm. And we've been such a pioneer in this space that we have the age on the domain that really makes us as kind of a leading, um, uh, a leading, I guess, application in this arena. So the biggest challenge, I think, is really finding that sweet spot of either a partnership or a marketing uh, campaign that really drives revenue growth as well as not having such a high customer acquisition cost that makes it absolutely uh, impossible for us. Um, we've done the route of Google AdWords and the CPA for those new customers was just so exorbitantly high. It didn't make sense. And the key terms that we're going after uh, – you know, are pretty generic. You're talking about Facebook mm -hmm. and you're talking about shopping. So that in itself creates a challenge of how do you get the people who are truly looking for creating a shop on Facebook without it being too long tail. How about the Facebook ad platform? I would imagine that, I mean, just my assumption, that should be effective from my perspective, but I, I'm sure you, you had your share of experience. So how did that work out? For sure. Uh, that was just as, uh, if not worse, a failure than Google AdWords. Uh, we've also tried the LinkedIn campaign, which 
I actually thought was going to be better than Facebook because, you know, these are people who you can target as social media managers or social media directors Mm -hmm. or e-commerce managers. That is the type of people that we're wanting to market to. Mm -hmm. But a lot of use of LinkedIn comes from people actually wanting to change careers. Right. So it's it's actually it presented its own challenge by not being able to reach the right decision makers there either because they were probably leaving a job while we were marketing to them about what they could do with their present job, which mm-hmm. you can imagine is probably low interest for them. <laughs> so do you have for, for 2014, do you have a certain growth strategy in mind? Yes, um, we're about to publish an ebook for the first time, um, and we have a lot of content that has been created for our blog, helping our users to be able to see other case studies of storefronts mm-hmm. that have been successful in social commerce, which really is kind of where people, I think, uh, may fail in this arena because if they're not familiar with how to really engage their fans, mm-hmm. they may think that just having a Facebook store is enough. Which, with any social media strategy, you know that it's really about engagement. It's about creating that exclusive community Mm -hmm. and loyalty with your brand within Facebook and ensuring that they get the information to see your storefront. So just putting it up there, it's like we're a a tool for people to use. But unless we are used in the correct way, will it only be successful for those people? So uh, that ebook will talk about various case studies that should help give ideas to our customers who may be struggling with seeing the engagement levels rise. Sure. And one thing, um, a theme that I'm, I've been hearing consistently is how uh, it's, the term you just mentioned, content marketing, and more importantly, inbound marketing, you know, mm-hmm. how you, once a visitor comes to your site, you want to make sure that they, are, they stay engaged. Right. Make sure you have uh, proper tools in place to keep them interested enough to convert them into leads, right? Mm -hmm. And then you want to have enough content and uh, other strategies in place to make sure you keep nurturing them so that they eventually transform into your customers, right? Mm -hmm. And then you want to keep educating them and providing value to them that they, in turn, start promoting your brand to others, right? Exactly. So you have to have that whole funnel in place. Um, Anyway, it looks like you, you are on a, you know, we hope. <laughs> we done, nailed down. So hopefully by the end of 2014, right? We will For be sure. In a much better spot. So um, before we wrap up, wrap up uh, let me ask you this. This is, um, having been through what you've been through in the past four years, mm-hmm. what one advice that you can give to an aspiring entrepreneur who is trying to get something done, who is trying to build something? Hmm, one piece of advice. Um... I would say between points A and B, Mm -hmm. there are a lot of ways to get to point B Mm -hmm. and never let anyone tell you that the way that you get to point B is the wrong way. Because a lot of times it can be that exploration to the various ways to get to point B that are the right and even more successful ways to get to those points. So that would be my advice. (laughs) Thanks, Benjamin. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And my pleasure. I wish you all the success. Yeah, good luck to you guys as well on your launch. Thanks. Yeah, my pleasure.